Midwest Dream Car Collection. I'm Doug Malone, the Director of Vehicle Operations here. And today we're going to be looking at one of our loan vehicles here to the museum. Uh, we're blessed uh, to have, at any given time, 15 to 20 cars on loan to the museum uh, for display. And uh, today we're going to talk about this 1961 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Um, the 1961 Cadillac was really taking a different uh, design outlook for their new cars. Bill Mitchell had taken over from the legendary Harley Earl in 1958 and uh, in 1958 was about the time this car was being designed. So Harley Earl still had an influence on the 1961s and even 1962s, but really it was Bill Mitchell's uh, uh, cutting edge design that really shines through in this new, this new model. Uh, one of the uh, principles behind the 1961 was to give the car a more youthful and a lighter look, a more streamlined look than the heavier cars of the 1950s. We all know the 1959 Cadillac with the gargantuan huge tail fins on the back and the big massive bumpers and uh, tons and tons of chrome. Well, Bill Mitchell liked the more clean look of a car and the more chiseled look. Uh, the 1961 kind of gained some of its features from the uh, uh, Cadillac Cyclone concept car as well as the Firebird 3 concept cars. And if we walk around the car here in a little bit, I'll point out some of those features that, that followed through from those concept cars. Anyway, let's get a little bit of a look at the car, some of the things that changed for 1961. Um, the car was a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter than the previous model years had been. The main difference on the 1961 Cadillacs was a completely different appearance in the front grille of the car. Uh, now this was kind of controversial at the time because it almost looked a little bit Chevrolet-like, um, but it is a very clean cut line, a car, and really an attractive looking car. Um, you get down to the grill of the car, and one of the features that carried through from Cadillacs of previous uh, years was the very massive grill, uh, and still we have the individual uh, little bullets. Uh, and these are these grills are hand assembled, and each one of these little fins are held together by these little tiny uh, projectile bullet type things. So, massively beautiful, uh, almost jewel-like grill on these cars. Um, here again, we still have the quad headlights that carried through from previous years. A little bit cleaner line in the, the front appearance of the bumper, a little bit lighter looking uh, with the circular uh, directional signals, parking lights down here. If your car had optional fog lights, then the fog light would have been built into these, to these areas here as well. Uh, so very simple lines on the front of the car. Uh, here again, you have your beautiful uh, crest and Cadillac crest and V adorned on the hood of the car. Um, if you walk around the car, uh, Things that have carried over from previous models are the uh, directional signal housing lights on the fenders, uh, which would blink out here when you turn your directionals on. It's very easy to see from inside the car. 1961 still did not have coring lights, and you'll see that on where this fin panel is right here. And later models would have been a light that lit up when you turn the corner. 1961, that was still not an option yet, so we have these uh, really gracefully uh, aluminum fins in here really gives the car a swept back look. To me, it makes the car like it's mo moving even when it's still parked. Here again, you have your DeVille insignia up here, uh, letting you know what model this car is. Uh, white walls were starting to come down a little bit more. Uh, 19, late 1950s, they would have been much wider. 1961, they came down to about two inches. And then from then on out, got down to very thin lines by 1963 to what you'd see throughout the 60s. Here again, very graceful appearance on the side of the car. Coming back, um, tail fins were starting to come back down by the 1960s, and by 1964, uh, the last of the fins would be on the Cadillacs, so 1965 they were gone. Uh, 1959, the fins would have been up about this high, 1960s, so they gradually were coming down. By 1964, they were about half this size, um, but uh, really a beautiful way to uh, grace the back of this car with these, these fins. Now something new for 1961 was the lower fin, known as Skeggs, and this was a carryover from the concept car, uh, the Cadillac uh, Cyclone, as well as the Firebird 3. If you look at those models, you can see where they have these lower type fins, and so Cadillac carried that over, as did Buick and uh, Oldsmobile, I think on some of their cars, had Skeggs uh, for the 1961-62 model years as well. Uh, but this is the lower fin on the car, really gave it a different appearance from, from previous models. Still have the fender skirts on the cars for the 1960s. That's something that would bow out by the middle of the 1960s on most cars. Cadillac carried them over for, for years to come yet, but uh, 61 still has the, the fender skirts on the cars. Um, 61s adorn their, their wheels with 
full wheel covers, kind of a turban look. They were color coded to match the color of the body style. The color of this car is Lexington Green. This is the correct factory color for 1961. Again, you have the Cadillac crest on the center of the, the wheel disc. And you still have bias ply tires. Something else, you still have a 1961 or four, four wheel drum brakes. No disc brakes set on Cadillacs. So, a very heavy car being stopped by drum brakes. Walk around to the back of the car. I guess I should pause here for a moment. We look at the, the whole shape of the roof on the Coupe de Ville's in 1961. Uh, really became the C pillar, became really thin. Very large, massive rear window. Uh, these cars later became affectionately known as bubble top cars, mainly in the Chevrolet models. But uh, this is kind of the same principle behind the Chevrolet's Cadillac's this design type on the Coupe de Ville's, uh, what they were known as bubble top. Uh, 1962, the, the C pillar would get much heavier. Um, on some of the Coupe de Ville's, but the 1961 had the very thin pillars. Come back around behind the car. Here again, very clean lines. Um, here again, jet inspired uh, design features. Here we have the, the tail lights down here, as well as the tail light up here in the fan blade. But uh, you have your directional signals and your backup lights in here. Here again, you can see how ornate Cadillac was with finishing their uh, lights out, even with separate little chrome appliques here inside. Uh, the cross hatching in here, just to give a look of a jet fighter where the jet uh, power would come out. So, a very neat, cool feature on the Cadillacs of that time. Gas cap, conveniently, for many years, hidden behind the tail light by 1960s, late, early 60s. Uh, they moved that and they became hidden in this panel right here, down in here. Then eventually they would have been moved down behind the gas or the uh, license plate, but 1961-62s are hidden in this back fascia here. Here again, you had your Cadillac V and crest, nicely adorned. Um, massive trunks in these cars. You can see in here, lots of room for luggage, golf clubs, um, all kinds of things. Uh, so very nicely appointed in the Cadillacs. This had been an Eldorado model. This would have had a cloth cover over it, cloth cover. Uh, that was an option on the Coupe de Ville's. Uh, so this does not have the cloth cover on it, but a nicely uh, uh, restored example here using the correct fabrics, cloth fabrics uh, that would have been used in 1961. The original 1961 jacking instructions uh, posted on the trunk lid there. Now some of the 1961s came with electric closure on the trunks. This car does not have it, where you would have closed the trunk to about here and then it would have grabbed it and pulled the rest of the way down. This one we do have to still close the regular way. Um, inside the Cadillacs for 1961, now this is a Coupe de Ville model, so this is a step up from the basic uh, Series 62, which would have been your, your base model in your Cadillac. So with the Coupe de Ville, you get into a little, lot more ornamentation, a little nicer appearance in the door panels. Um, Coupe de Ville had power windows. Uh, that wasn't a standard feature on the Series 62. You could still have crank windows. Um, you could also get power vent windows on these cars. This car does not have that feature, so we still have the cranked up vent window on this one. Uh, but the rest of the windows are, are power, as you can see here. Uh, this is your mirror adjuster for your outside mirror. And then your, your power seat power seat switch here. It's two-way power seat switch on this for forward and back. You get six-way power seat switch was an option. The interior uh, adorned on the Coupe de Ville's, uh, typically in cloth, leather, and vinyl combination. This is in a green Covington cloth with leather, uh, nicely appointed, uh, done correctly in the restoration. Uh, and into the back, back seat area, you just pull your seat up here to be able to get to the back compartment. Front and back armrest of the 1961 was standard on the Coupe de Ville's would not have been uh, on the ninth, or in the Series 62 model. Uh, now the step up from this would have been the Eldorado or the Fleetwood models, which would even come with more standard uh, equipment, leather, all leather interiors and things like this. The dashboard of the 1961 models carries over some of the traits from the earlier 1959-60 models uh, with general layout, not as massive as those models were. Still a very clean layout. You had your strip speedometer, which was very standard back in those days on the cars. Uh, then you have your Cadillac spelled out here as if you didn't know you were in a Cadillac when you were riding in the car. Clock over here. Large bin glove compartment opens up here. Then you have two 
ashtray receivers with lighters, one for the passenger, one for the, for the driver, same within the back seat uh, in the coves there. Uh, mirror on the sun visors, day night mirrors. Little knob up or little device up here is your automatic headlight dimmer called the Guide Matic. You could adjust the sensitivity of that. This would automatically dim your bright lights if you had them on uh, as you were going down the road. Car does have power steering and power brakes. This car is equipped with air conditioning. Air conditioning was still not a standard feature in 1961. Uh, so that was a nice option to have in the car. Uh, we have our radio. AM radio was still standard feature in 1961. FM was not available in the Cadillacs till 1963, uh, even though it was out in the market. Um, car has uh, standard AM radio, and it has the sky, uh, scan where you can just push this. It'll automatically scan to the next available station, or you can use your buttons or your turn knobs. The button over here will lower and raise your antenna out there on the outside, as you can see it coming up and going down. Uh, your heater controls over here, separate unit over here for your air conditioning with your fan speeds, windshield wipers and washers over here, and your light switch, and your horn buttons here in the steering wheel. We're going to center, you have your nicely done Cadillac Crest uh, center stage there. We talked about the directional signals earlier being out there on the hood. You can see where those blink. Very easy to see them, so you don't forget to turn them off uh, if you should do so. So anyway, let's go pop the hood and see what powers this car. 1961 uh, engine that was in these cars was basically a carrier for the 1949 uh, V8 overhead engine that, that Cadillac came out with in that year. Uh, just a different bore and stroke to bring up to 390 cubic inches at about 325 horsepower. Uh, this car is equipped with air conditioning like we talked about earlier. So here you see the original Frigidaire A5 compressor, sealed compressor. This car still does use the R12 over here down, tucked down below. You can see the original generator on the car. Alternators did not come out on Cadillacs or any General Motors product until 1963. So we still have the standard alternator, or I'm sorry, generator, uh, correctly labeled. Uh, this tubing here is uh, a cooling tube, and there's a little port up here beside the battery. So as you drive down the road, air can come in this tube, go back here and shoots into the back of the generator to help keep the generator cool as you're driving, kind of a cool little feature there that Cadillac had. Here we have our horns. This car does not have the trumpet horn. That was an option on the DeVille, stand on the Eldorados, uh, but the low and high note horns. Little dealer accessory here that you could buy. Uh, so if you ran out of washing fluid for your windshield washer when you're on the road, you could pop this out and fill it up just by simply moving a little hole here and filling it up and then closing that back over. Kind of a cool little accessory. Something else that we still see on 1961 is a single reservoir master cylinder. All the good reason to have an emergency brake just in case this fails because then you lose your brakes. But very reliable, actually. Uh, I've had uh, cars like this for years and never had any problem with them as long as you maintain them correctly. Uh, they're very reliable. Power steering pump you see here. Oil breather and filler caps here. Um, so just pretty basic, basic engine. A uh, very strong, durable engine that powered this 1961 Cadillac. I well, hope you come, come visit us and uh, check out not only this car, but our other loan cars that we have here at the museum, as well as the museum's collections of cars. And we'll look forward to continue to do some more of these uh, individual videos in the weeks ahead. So, thank you.